Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel 2016 for the Mac. And in this tutorial we're continuing to look at charts. Previously we've covered column charts and pie charts and in this tutorial we're going to look at creating a line chart. And a line chart is great for illustrating things like sales over time, which is what we have here. So first of all I'm going to create a chart for the North store and then later on we'll add the other three stores. And as you know, the first thing to do is to select the data for the chart, so the range of data. And I'm going to select everything from A3 down to F4. So that's the month names, the store name North, and obviously the values for that store. Go to the Insert tab, come across to the Chart section, click on the Line Chart button, and I'm going to come to the second row. And the first option there is the one I'm looking for. It's Line with Markers, so if I click on that, you'll see there we have the chart. And I'm just going to relocate that again, just click and drag to move that into a different position. And as I've mentioned before, just make sure when you're moving a chart that when the mouse pointer goes into the chart, that the word chart area appears, and then you can click and drag to move. And also remember that when the chart is selected, you'll have the two options, the additional options, chart design and format. But I'm going to use the options on the Home tab to do a little bit of formatting here. Uh, first of all, I'll click on the horizontal axis, which are my month names. So just click to select and you'll see the, the box appears to indicate that has been selected. Go to the Home tab and I'm simply going to click on the bold button just to make those names stand out a little bit. I'm also going to do the same thing to my values there in the vertical axis. and uh, Click on those values, click B for bold. And there's one more thing I want to do to these values, which is to format them as currency. But if I come across to the number section on the Home tab, you'll see that all the options are greyed out apart from my decimal place buttons. So I can't set currency here. So what do I need to do? Well, one option is to double click on the numbers. So if I double click on the vertical axis, you'll see the chart formatting sidebar appear that we've seen in previous tutorials. So I'll just check I have Format Axis as the title in the sidebar and then close this Axis Options list here by clicking the option there and then open up the Number Options. And under Category at the moment I have General, so I'm going to change that from General to Currency and I'm also going to set Decimal Places to Zero. So just highlight the two, type Zero on the keyboard, press the Enter key. And if you look back at the chart and the vertical axis, you'll see my numbers now have the currency formatting applied. I'm going to close the chart formatting sidebar for now and do a bit more formatting again on my vertical axis. And this time I want to change the range of values. Now, if you look at the line, it looks like it's a fairly moderate increase. But what I want to do is exaggerate the changes that appear on the line. And one way I can do that is to change the numbers in the axis. And I'm going to change the numbers on the low end. Now, if you look at my minimum values there, you'll see the lowest value of all the store sales is 875. Now, I could set 875 as the low point, but what I'm going to do is build in a safety margin and set the low points for my vertical axis to 700. So again, what I'm going to do here is double click on the vertical axis. And in fact, I'll just move the chart left so you can see how the change is applied and how the line changes. So if I come back to the axis again and click to bring my options back for format axis, I need to make sure that axis options is selected. And in the first section, I'm going to open up the axis options there. And under bounds, you can see minimum currently set to zero, maximum currently set to 1400. As I said, I'm going to leave maximum and simply highlight the value already in minimum, type 700 on the keyboard, and I'm going to press the Enter key, but keep an eye on the change on the chart. There we go. So if I close that sidebar down again, just move the chart back there so you can see the values as well on the table. So you can see now a much more pronounced change in the sales. And that's something that you'll see quite often, perhaps without even realizing. So as an example, you often see charts of share price changes or a share index over a course of a year, for example. And what they will not do is set the lower end of that chart, so the value will never be set at zero. What they will do, obviously, to exaggerate the changes is set the low and the high values, something close to the low and high end. 
So that's something you might want to think about with your line charts if you want to exaggerate the changes in the data is to change the values in the vertical axis. One of the potential problems of a line chart is matching the data point to the label on the category axis, the horizontal axis. Now, on this particular chart, it isn't such a problem because as you can see, there's quite a wide gap between the data points. And so reading down isn't really an issue. But in a case where you have many more data points, it can be. So I'll show you one potential solution if that's something that does affect you. All you need to do is make sure again, the chart is selected Make sure you have the chart design tab also selected and over on the left hand side of that you'll see this add chart element button. And if I click on the drop down there, we get all the options to add different things to the chart. One of those is lines and we'll get an additional menu here and one of the options is drop lines. So if I click on drop lines and you can see the effect there on the chart that we have now these vertical lines linking the data point to the category axis label. And as with previous charts, if you want to have an accurate representation of the value for each data point, you can add a data label. And I'm going to do that as well. So if I again come back to that same option, the add chart element button, click on the drop down, and this time come to data labels, and you'll see they will have several options. I'm going to select above, which basically means that the labels will be positioned above the data point on the chart. So if I click now, you'll see those labels appear. It's also possible to add and remove specific data labels. So if you don't want every data point to have a label, that is an option. For example, if I click once on any label, that will select all the data labels. I can then click again on the one that I want to remove. So let's say I don't want this 950 value to be labeled. I can simply click on that data label and press delete on the keyboard. As it happens, I don't want any of these additional things on the chart. So first of all, I'm going to click on the drop lines and press delete. And second of all, I will click on my data labels and press delete. I've done that because I'm going to add additional data series to the chart later on. And it's going to look quite busy with all those additional graphics. However, what I can do is show you another way that you can make these data points stand out a little bit more clearly. This time I'll double click on the line. And again, my sidebar opens there. I'll just move the chart again out of the way so you can see the changes I'm making. And I'll need to click back on the line there to reselect. And I'm going to click on the first option there, fill and line. And under that particular tab, I've got two options, line and marker. So I'm going to select marker because it is the data point marker that I'm wanting to change. And then click on marker options to open those. At the moment, it's set to automatic and I'm going to select built in. And you'll see here now I have the type option available. If I click on the drop down arrow, if I want to, I can change it to another shape, but I'm going to leave it as the circle for now. And I'm going to change the size to 10. So I'll just use the up arrow on that little dial there to move it to 10. I'm then going to come into the fill section, choose solid fill. And under color, I'll just click on the drop down arrow for the color options and I'm going to choose red, so it'll stand out really well. And you can see already on the chart that those changes have been applied. Again, I'll close that sidebar, just click away so you can see now that those data points, the markers stand out very strongly indeed. So it's very clear which month they relate to, if it wasn't before. Next, I want to add the data for those other three stores to my chart. So first of all, I'm going to click on the chart and just move it again to the right of the data so we can see what I'm actually selecting. And you can also now, if you look at the data, see this highlighting box, you can see a blue and a purple or mauve line to select. So the purple line highlights the category labels. There's also a red box there or red line highlighting the series name and the blue line highlights the values. What I'm going to do here is put the mouse pointer at the bottom right of that value box. You can see there how the mouse pointer changes. So it goes from a white cross to a hand if it's on the edge and then over the drag handle it becomes a surrounding box. And first of all, I'm just going to move it down one series. So if I drag it down and you can see how the border changes from one selection to cover north and south and release the mouse button and the new line immediately appears in the chart. You can also move that selection. If you remember the hand icon that appears when you move the mouse to the edge of the box click and drag down. So if I drag down two rows, 
So what I have now is east and west plotted instead of north and south. But I'm going to drag upwards now. So put the mouse pointer this time at the top right of that boundary box. Click and drag up to select all four stores. Release the mouse button and you'll see that all four stores are now plotted. Now my first problem here is it's not clear what the colours relate to in terms of the store name. So all I need to do is again make sure the chart is selected. Come to my chart design tab and again over on the left choose the chart element drop down there. Come down again, point to the legend options and I'm going to put the legend at the top of the chart. So if I click on that option you'll see now that I can clearly see which colours are for which store. You'll notice that two of the lines have smaller line markers and I can change that again just by double clicking on that yellow line for example. Again just come to the fill and line options, go to marker, choose marker options, again choose built in, just make sure I've got the circle there, bring that up to 10. I could actually choose a different marker shape if I wanted to so I might have a diamond for this particular series and again if I come to solid fill I might change the colour to a blue. And if I then click on the orange line for my south store, I can choose again built in. Perhaps I'll have a square. And again, just tick that up to 10 point in size. And you can see the change is automatically applied there. Close the sidebar down. Again, just click away and you can see the result of those changes. You can see one problem is the lines are quite close together. So I might want to look at maybe tweaking that vertical axis again and you can see that no value drops below 800 so maybe I'll set the low end to 800 to just give my lines a little bit more separation so if I click on the chart again anywhere this time I'm going to go to the format tab and if you do want to open that format pane at any time you come to the right side of the format tab just click on the format pane button and you'll have that option available so I'm going to click on my vertical axis Go to the Options tab, which is the fourth one along in this particular case. And you'll see the Axis Options in the first section there. Just click to open those up. At the moment, you can see my minimum is set to 700. So I'll just highlight that again. And we'll type 800. And again, just press the Enter key. That's a little bit better, but one more tweak I'll make is on the line again, the markers. So if I click on the orange line, and under the Format Data Series section there, click on the Line and Fill. Go to Marker, select Marker Options, and I'll actually choose a circle again. And what I'll do is I'll make those circles a little bit smaller, so perhaps 7 point instead of 10. So if I select the grey line now, bring that down to 7, and the red, or the blue and red, and then bring that down to 7 as well. Then just close that down, click away, and that looks a bit tidier. Now one final thing I will show you here is what happens when someone extends this table to add a new month of data. So I'll just move that chart away from the table so we've got some space there in column G. And I'm going to type in June because that will be the next month. Press the Enter key. You'll notice the formatting is automatically applied there. And let's enter some values for June. So 11.50 for North, 10.95 for South, 10.50 for East, and 11.95 for West. Now you'll notice that the chart doesn't automatically update with those new values. So again, what I need to do is click on the chart. You'll see again the boundary box there. Put the mouse pointer at the bottom of the blue boundary box, the one surrounding the values. Click and drag to include June. Release the mouse button and you'll see June appears on the category axis and obviously all our June data points now appear on the chart. So I'll just click away again there to deselect and that completes this look at creating line charts. I hope you found something useful there that you can apply to the spreadsheets that you're working on. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.